Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Shinrin Yoku, and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Saturday, September 26th, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time 2020. And you're looking at the latest GFS model, which is showing snow into early October. Certainly in October to remember. Let's get that little centered there. How's everybody doing? The big story, Alp surprises by early snowfall predicted a week ago here on the channel. Swiss town sees new record and we'll get to that. Keep calm. It is boom time and we were correct once again. Late September snow hits tops of Whistler Peak. Summer like conditions could return later this week, but not after a winter wonderland. Showing up on snow cams at the top of Whistler Blackcomb. Just a dusting of snow Saturday, but there's more to come. Snow falling in northwestern Wyoming mountains Saturday as well. And there's a picture from the webcam. Seattle man died just days earlier after encountering whiteout conditions on Rainier, in Rainier National Park. Now I've climbed this baby up here from Paradise, uh, up here through the Nisqually Glacier, maybe up right in this region and up through here. But it can get bad up there quick, trust me. Now, let's real quick take a look at the GFS model and show you where that snow's falling. It's falling tonight in BC and in the mountains of Alberta, but it's also falling in Montana and high country in Idaho and Wyoming. Some spots here in central Colorado will pick up a little bit of the white. Then a secondary system starting right at the beginning of October here, October 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, going to bring lots of snow up into Alberta and Canada as the winter begins. We have snow falling as early as October 12th to the 32nd parallel. Snow being reported according to the GFS model in Tennessee and West Virginia in the beginning of October. Hello. Critical fire weather conditions for much of the West. Summer-like warmth for parts of Central and Southeastern U.S. Unsettled conditions in the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic. Pacific Northwest will gradually improve this weekend. Meanwhile, critical fire weather conditions are expected to persist over parts of the Rockies. Those are these pink zones where we're going to have heavy winds. But we have freeze warnings and frost and freeze advisories in the blue, light blue, and teal. So click on those counties if you live there and save your crops. Snow at Mollison Mountain. Yeah, this is today. Take a look at that. We can even see where the snow line is right about here. Now, this is uh, fresh snow visible on the slopes of Mollison Mountain near the green pastures on Saturday, 26th of September. Today in Gruyere, Switzerland. Gruyere. Gruyere. It's good cheese. So there's that. Now, let's get back to the... Headline, Alps surprised by early snowfall. Well, had they watched our channel, they wouldn't have been surprised. As early as six days ago, I predicted up to one meter of snow in the Alps, and they got it. Parts of Switzerland, Austria, and Germany were surprised because they're not supposed to have snow anymore by an unseasonably early snowfall overnight. Yeah, just a week after the solstice, and it's boom time. Parts of Switzerland, Austria, and Germany were surprised, like most scientists, by unseasonably early snowfall overnight. After a sharp drop in temperatures and heavy precipitation were not predicted by anyone except Diamond. Well, and probably many others. <laughs> the Swiss Meteorolog Meteorological Agency said Saturday that the town of Montana, which is not in the U.S., but in Switzerland, in the southern canton state of Valas, experienced 25 centimeters, almost 10 inches of the global warming goodness. A new record for this time of year. Authorities were also in forces across mountainous regions and two alpine nations to clear roads blocked by snow and ice. In parts of Austria, snowfall was recorded as low as 550 meters. That's just 1,800 feet, which is like the entire Appalachians. So there's that. And we're back. Alps surprised by early snowfall. Are you surprised? Because we weren't. Australia, Australia weather, not even Austria. We're going all the way to Australia. And our friend Giles over there is getting sleet and snow and others that he shouldn't be getting this early, especially with global warming. But a cold front brings springtime snow and damaging winds to the southeast. Temperatures plummet as snowfall reported in parts of New South Wales, Victoria, and the HCT. 
Springtime snow has fallen in parts of the southeastern Australia and a severe weather warning is in place as cold front moves across the New South Wales. Damaging winds hit the Sydney on Friday with winds of 115 kilometres recorded at Camden in the city southwest, gusts reached 106 kilometres. A severe weather warning is in place on Saturday for damaging winds and gusts of more than 90 kilometres per hour expected in the Illawarra and parts of the southern and central tablelands. So, early snow coming to a country or continent near you. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Well, I lied. I always do. So we have some mid-ocean ridge activity that's quite substantial. And that was in the form of a, right down here. Look at that baby. 6.1 south of South Africa. We got some quake, frack quakes, quakes here in Oklahoma. But this was what really drew my attention up here into Iceland. We have a 4.7 in Honf, which is right over top of a very large mid-ocean ridge calderic volcano. It actually should be. How do we do that? It's all reversed. It's so confusing. But I quickly went over to one of our main sources here, over here at icelandgeology.net, Joan Fiel, backslash volcano. And they've been reporting over the last 48 hours that a huge swarm has been ongoing, an increase in earthquake swarm east of the Grimsey Islands during the night of the 26th was an uptick from the night of the 25th, where over 100 quakes, including a 4.3, boomed in that region. During the night of 26 September, the earthquake swarm that has been ongoing east of Grimsley Island is called Nafir. Increased total of six earthquakes with magnitude above three mag took place during the night. The largest was a 4-3. The area has a volcano that is unnamed but often called Nafir. There is no global volcanism program profile. And this and the last eruption in this volcano is unknown. Wow. So we're getting a little jiggy, a little tantalizing. The largest earthquake here felt in Grimsley Island and over the nearby populated areas, according to Icelandic news, people of Grimsley are ti tired of the constant earthquake activity that has been ongoing in the Chionis Fracture Zone. Well, I would say get the fuck out of Dodge if you're tired of it because this baby's going to blow. If it doesn't blow up here in the north, and let's go take, take a look at the mid-ocean ridge scenario here. So we'll just blow this up for you and we'll get, do a quick geolo geo geology 50. How's that looking? We'll do a quick geo 50 class. You can see the USGS quake coming in at 4.7 in Hope Iceland is down here in this calderic field where there's large, huge. These are where the volcanoes on the rift erupt at VEI 4.5, continuously shut down air traffic, etc. The swarm we saw was up above here on the rift where Nafir volcano is, and that it could be showing huge amounts of magma moving along the entire rift zone down into the main volcano caldera area. So we've been predicting this baby to blow and be the kickoff of some of the nonsense that's going to be happening in uh, years to come. And so activity is increasing. So keep a very close eye to the Iceland area. Vikings weren't all Scandinavian, ancient DNA studies show. Now, did you know that Vikings once farmed Greenland and now it's covered in ice? Yeah. So there's that. Greenland was much warmer in about 1,000 AD, 1,000 years ago. The mainstream is lying to you and they're saying that, it, no, it wasn't as warm as it is now. But it's still covered in ice, so that's a lie. But let's come and see what this study told us. They carried out the first largest ever DNA analysis of Viking remains to explore how they fit into the genetic picture of ancient Europeans before the Viking age. Now, the first author, Dr. Ashot Magurang, a researcher at the Section for Evolutionary Genomics in the Globe Institute, the University of Copenhagen, the results were startling and some answers long-standing historical questions that confirm previous assumptions that lacked evidence. And this evidence suggests that not only did they find uh, genetically pure Viking DNA uh, in burials where up to four brothers in one burial site were all the same genetics, obviously from the same village buried together, but they also found genetically Pictish people became Vikings without genetically mixing or having sex with any Vikings. And the Pictish people were from Scotland. So Scottish people could become Viking if they wanted to. And it shows that a lot of the Scots were Vikings and they had no Viking blood. So interesting study coming out proving that 
all types of people used to hang out together a long time ago. Can you believe that? I can't. I can't even believe that Florida reopens the state economy despite the ongoing pandemic. Oh my God. Governor Ron DeSantis lifted all restrictions on restaurants and other businesses in Florida on Friday. And, and I spoke to hundreds of people Friday night and none of them knew about it. But Saturday morning they did know. And everyone in Florida is going to die now. Or not. I think 99.94% of the people will be alive. Even, well, anyway. A bill approved the state house to open doors in Michigan to keep bars open at 4 a.m. to spread the disease even further. Good news for small businesses. Bad news for people over 90. <laughs> Did you know that the COVID-19 vaccine protocols reveal that the trials for these vaccines are designed to succeed? I, that's a very wordy title, but let's just come down to the brass tacks. Prevention of infection is not a criteria for success for any of the vaccines being tested. Prevention of infection is not a criteria for success of any of the vaccines. Now, what's happening with the transparency of all this vaccine nonsense happening during a, the pandemic is that people are starting to realize that vaccines are not designed to cure anything. And that's what's showing up in this protocol over here. Vaccines are not designed to prevent anything. Now, prevention of infection must be a critical endpoint to any disease, especially a novel one. And any vaccine trial should include regular antigen testing every three days to test contagiousness, to pick up early signs of infection. Then PTR, PCR testing wants to confirm the SARS-CoV-2 infection. But prevention of infection is not a criteria for success of these vaccines. All they want to see is immune response and better outcomes in the end. So vaccines aren't des designed to prevent you from getting the disease. They, they're designed to allow you to get the disease, spread it to other people, and have a more desired effect. Where it doesn't really tax the hospitals, but you still have to go there and spend a lot of your money. It's a scam. It's been going on for decades, and it's now being revealed before your very lives. <clears throat> kind of like climate change. Antarctic ice loss expected to affect future climate change. Of course, if you lose ice, things shift. Now, the problem with losing ice on planet Earth is that a snowball effect happens. If the Arctic collapses and there was actually no ice, it wouldn't get warmer it would shut down all the warm water currents that are moving up into the Arctic and it would get very cold very quick in some of the northern latitudes. The same effect could happen with Antarctica. And they're saying that this gigantic ice sheet's going to break off and move up into the warm water. Well, what do you think is going to happen there? Southern currents will stop as well, affecting climate in ways that are unprecedented. And they have nothing to do with you. This is all natural climate variability, which was predicted decades ago based on proxy data. There is no anthropogenic effect anywhere when it comes to climate, except locally in cities, the heat island effect, and everywhere on the planet, the pollution effect, which is giving everyone cancer, polluting our waterways, polluting our oceans, and we're still burying trash at alarming rates. In most third world countries, they just dump it straight in the fucking rivers. And that's where we are today. Billions of tons of raw sewage being dumped into oceans and rivers. But they're taxing you for carbon dioxide, which keeps plants alive. Do you realize how stupid you are if you're a Democrat and you're part of the green movement and you think you're doing something when you're fighting to tax plant food and to stop to reduce the amount of plant food on the planet? What a type, what type of idiot were you born of? I mean, do you even have a spine? Do you have a conscience? Do you, can you think correctly? Do you know how to add two numbers? There has been zero change in 50 years and all the uh, left-wing maniacs have been fighting, fighting to save the earth, but have done zero 
And, and what they've done is they've shifted the paradigm over to fossil fuel, from fossil fuels to renewable resources, which are 10 times more damaging to our biome and our earth than fossil fuels. Yeah, I said it. Renewable resources are a scam more corrupt than COVID-19. The rare earth elements that they rape from the surface of the earth to make the windmills. Photovoltaics right now, there are hundreds of millions of panels which are unrecyclable, completely toxic. And guess where they're going to go? In a hole in the field right next to the wind turbines, which are being buried by the thousands. Can you imagine in a decade when we have a million wind turbines to bury? Where will we plant food? Disgusting. Left and right, both bunch of idiots. Yet everyone's like, I got to vote. You got to vote. Mail in. Go walk in. There are people that are at the post office literally harvesting ballots, looking at them and burning them in piles. But the mainstream claims there's no such thing as voter fraud. Never happened. There's never been voter fraud ever. It's impossible. It can't happen. That's what the majority of the population believes. When there's story after story of thousands and thousands of ballots being manipulated from one side or the other, from a bunch of scumbags, that their only purpose is to defraud you. It has nothing to do with democracy. Democracy was dead before it even began. We were warned about this by the founding fathers and others. No one listened. And people talk so poorly about our founding fathers as they were the Illuminati, they're Freemasons, they used to eat babies. That's what they're doing now because you allowed it. So please, vote for the left or the right and continue the nightmare. Archaeologists find 13,000-year-old engraved mammoth tusk in Siberia. Now, I looked at the engravings here, and these people are either full of shit or in fairy tale land. But this is evidence that some people 13,000 years ago etched some shit on some things, but it's certainly not a high-resolution picture of anything. They're claiming this is camels. I'm claiming it's some kind of a snail or a worm that etched out wood. Did you ever take off bark from a tree limb when you were young and think someone was trying to communicate with you? This is the same kind of shit. Total nonsense, in my opinion. What's not nonsense is the not-so-hostile takeover from Neanderthal and Denisovians. Now, this is all occurring during one of the most major magnetic excursions in our history, back at around 41,000 years ago. And that was the extinction of Neanderthal. But prior to that, Neanderthal and Denisovians, two completely different craniums, were interbreeding and interacting. And some more recent evidence in archaeology came out that how Neanderthals as early as 20,000, 30,000 years ago are burying people, had funerary rites. We have the lion man from the cave from 40,000 years ago. We have advanced cultures on this earth for tens of thousands of years and our children are being taught lies when there's overwhelming evidence that other civilizations existed on our earth that have been destroyed time and time again. The most recent, the ones that the Egyptian empire took over their realm on top of. The big platforms in Baalbek, all of the South American sites, Easter Island specifically, those moai are buried in 60 feet of sediment with a depositional rate of a few inches per thousands of years, how long does it take to bury those moai? Why is the scientific community so corrupt? It has to do with funding. Disinformation is controlled by local governments and, and communities. Did you know until just a decade or so ago, there was no scientific information shared across borders? The same people doing archaeological dig, dig south of the U.S. in Mexico that were digging up Chacoan sites didn't call them that. There was no inter-shared information. And it's only recently that we're actually starting to study indigenous peoples and what they actually did, which is why all this information seems so overwhelming to the masses, because it is. This information has been suppressed on purpose, and now we're coming to a flexure point where the entire grid is about to fail for long times, complete destruction of the empire, and they just don't give a shit. They, anything can be talked about, unless it has to do with modern politics, and they'll censor the shit out of you to the nth degree because that's what their millions of dollars are going towards these days.
bullshit. Hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. And that's a beautiful sight. But the whole point is to pull your head out of your buttocks. And that involves a popping noise. And we've been supplying it on this channel for almost five years now. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Well, actually, we're recording this on Mag Reversal News, which is only two years old. But I'm going to be sharing it over at ORP, hoping that people will find out how to come over here and subscribe. Because it's been two years, and less, barely one-fifth of our subs are over here right now. Be safe. We love you.